Hello, beautiful people. By popular demand, I am finally going to graciously tell you my personal strategy for how I write screenplays. So be grateful. In this first video, I'm going to explain where the best place to start is, which is with your audience. To find who is your audience and where will they be watching the finished film. And I'm also going to use film to describe everything from, uh, you know, uh, social media, YouTube videos, documentaries, comedy, drama, it all still applies. Um, I'll also be discussing how to use a logline and subjects and in later videos we'll cover about characters, structure, narrative perspective, outlining, and only totally later on we'll actually just describe the process of actually putting pen to paper. But right now I want to talk about audience. Who is your audience and where are they watching? Where are you watching this video right now? That is really the first question that you have to ask before you even begin to consider writing a screenplay. Is this going to be a Netflix and chill kind of situation? Is this going to be shown in a grand movie theater? Or is this going to be watched on a phone in the back of a bus, a rickety old bus? You need to understand this. And you need to understand not only who is your audience in terms of demographics, but where they will physically be watching it. Because remember, your screenplay is an instruction manual for how a finished film will look and sound. Now, if you'll indulge me for a moment, I'm going to go on a tangent about why screenplays have these seemingly arcane rules. I promise to get back to the practical advice in a moment. Really need to hammer home this point. Screenplay describes a finished film. And films are, of course, motion pictures. They are movements of sound and vision. A screenplay describes what movements the audience will see and hear. A screenplay describes a finished film, and therefore it describes the movements that the audience will see and hear. You may also be wondering why screenplays have all these arcane rules about margins and why we have to capitalize the first time a character appears and why we can only use interior exterior in the master scene headings. There is a very important reason Remember that a screenplay is a practical document. It is not a medium for artistic expression. I will explain that. Just hold on. A screenplay is a practical document. It is not it is not uh, the finished artwork in itself. It is really something that the front office, particularly the line producer, can use to determine how much money, time, and resources will be required to complete this film. Are there special effects shots? Do we need permits to shoot this historical scenery? How many cars do we need in the car chase scene? Do we need some pyrotechnics? What are the safety precautions we need? How much more money does that cost? Who do we need to hire to do that? All this needs to be determined from your screenplay. And that is why a screenplay is a practical document. Now, that doesn't diminish. Now, to all those irate screenwriters out there, that doesn't diminish the artistic input that you have or the creative power that you have. In fact, your job as a screenwriter is to write as unambiguously and as with as little room for interpretation as possible the finished film. The crew should basically see your screenplay, the cast and crew should see your screenplay more or less as an IKEA instruction manual. It should simply tell them what to do to make the film that you saw in your head. Remember, the screenplay is a document that explains what the finished film will look like to, a, or to an audience. So we need to know who this audience is and where, and where they are. I think John Cleese and Connie Booth, when they wrote Faulty Towers, understood this better than anyone. John Cleese had this theory that people tended to laugh more in groups. And he also noticed that in theater and in live audience situations, that the actors on stage actually had to stop reciting their lines to give enough space for the audience laughter to go through so that they could hear the next line. Now, of course, when you're doing a television production or a movie production, you don't have that issue. You have the microphones like this, very close to you, which will pick up everything you say. You, do, you don't need to worry about the audience laughter drowning out what you're hearing. Now, John Cleese and Connie Booth recognized this and they actually changed the way they wrote their teleplays. They put twice as many jokes in to make up for the, la to make up for the lack of laughter because there would only be two people sitting at home watching the show, they realized. So they put in double the jokes, which made them laugh more because there was more space because there wasn't a live audience. You see, Knowing who your audience is and where they're watching, two people watching at home, watching telly, in, directly affects the way you write your screenplay. 
Now, step two is a log line. I suggest you go and watch my other video where I describe the difference between teleplays and screenplays because it will explain what a log line is. There are really three things that a log line needs. It needs to be very short, it needs to have some kind of change or conflict in it, and ideally it describes your subject. I'll get to that in a second. I strongly implore you that when you're conceiving and in the gestation stage of what your screenplay is going to be, tell everyone your logline. Write up a two-sentence summary and start telling everyone. Watch their reaction and tailor and change your logline until you get the same reaction out of everyone else, which is, yeah, and then what happened? You need a subject. Now, a lot of my friends get very confused when I talk about subject because they confuse that with theme. So the, what I try to tell them is a theme might be beauty. A subject could be a lovely little flower, or it could be a beautiful supermodel, or it could even be, um, it could even be a classic car. These are all things that could embody beauty, but they are different subjects. The theme is the same, but they are different subjects. And likewise, you can use all of those to explore different themes. Your subject is not necessarily your protagonist. If you're making a film and the subject is Pol Pot, chances are he's not going to be the, the pro chances are he's not going to be the protagonist of your film. It may not even be a single person. It may be a group such as the Ferrari Tifosi, or it may be Manchester United, or it could even be an inanimate object such as a Ford Mustang, or the Himalayan Mountains, or the Sahara Desert. So, in conclusion. What have we learned? Well, we have to remember who our audience is and where will they physically be watching the finished film because the screenplay is a practical document that instructs people how to make that film. Then you can worry about your two-sentence logline, which should ideally involve some kind of change. It should have a change because films are movement. If it can include a conflict, that's great. Remember, just keep saying your logline to people. Just keep saying it, watch their reactions, your subject, your subject is not necessarily your protagonist. We'll get into a later video about um, characters. Now, in the next video, I'm going to discuss perspective, which is really this magical thing that kind of ties together your subject and your audience into one brilliant thing that gives you a real head start on your screenplay. Until then, I'm Constantine. Please stay sublime.